Hello, welcome. I'm Shibaji and you are learning C programming with me in this course. In this section, let's go ahead and build the famous rock, paper, scissor game. We are going to develop a simulation of the rock, paper, scissor game where one player is going to be the user who executes the program and the other player is going to be the computer itself. Now, in case if you do not know how this game is played, I hope uh, everyone of us knows how this game is played unless and until he or she is a wonder kid. Now, in case if you are a wonder kid and you really do not know how this game is played, let me briefly explain how this game is played. This game is played between two players, player one and player two, and they need to say a word at the same point of time. And the word could be either of rock, paper or scissor. If they say the same word uh, at the same time, then it's a draw. So if both of them comes up with rock, then it's a draw. Now, if player one says rock and player two says paper, then paper wins because paper can fold the rock within itself. Otherwise, if it is between paper and scissor, of course, the scissor wins because scissor can cut the paper. Between rock and scissor, it's the rock that wins because rock can break the scissor. So that's how the game is played. So as I said here, player one is going to be the user who is going to execute the program and player two is going to be the computer. Now, first of all, we need to develop a function that's going to receive the values for both the players and, and then it's going to compare those values and decide who wins. And that we are going to do here in this function rock, paper, scissor as I have written there. The function is not complete, only have, I have written the prototype there. You can see that it's receiving two integer values player one and player two and they are the values which are actually the words said by the player one and player two now we are going to represent these words using integers and we are going to use macros in order to write the words in our program but they are going to be actually represented as integers you can see that i have those macros defined there now in case if you do not know what the macro is let me explain that now, if we are writing something like this, hash defined rock one, we are actually telling the compiler to replace all the occurrences of the word rock with one. So we can use the word rock in our program in order to represent the rock, but the compiler is going to replace that with one when the compiler compiles the program. So we can use the words rock, paper, or scissor in our program and player one win or player two win and draw. All these words can be used in our program. So our program becomes more readable for the other person. If we do not go in this way, if we use one, two, and three for rock, paper, and scissor, then it's only inside the programmer's mind. And the programmer who writes this program would be able to recognize that one means rock and two means paper, three means scissor. But for the other person, like you, who is going to read the program, it's going to be really tough or complex for them to understand unless and until we have proper documentation there that one means rock like that. So if we can write the word rock, paper, scissor in our program while comparing the values, then it will be much more easier for us to understand the program. So the program becomes more readable. So that is why we actually define the macros there in our program. They actually provides name for the integer constants. So it, you'll be able to understand it when I go on and write that rock, paper, scissor function. Now I'll be using this function from the main function, but let's first develop this function where we are going to compare the values of player one and player two and find the result. So if, let me declare a variable there, result. If player one says rock, now you can see that I'm writing rock there. I'm not writing one and that is more readable. And player two, it says paper, then of course it's player two who wins. So it's going to be, result is going to be player two win. Else if, if player one is still rock, I mean player one says rock, it should be player one and player two says, don't forget that the player two is computer actually. Okay, and player two says scissor, then of course it is rock that wins. So the result is player one win because it is player one who says rock. So in this way, we need to write all the other cases there. Let me just quickly copy this. 
Okay, so here we go. If player 1 says paper and player 2 says rock, then it's between rock and paper. Since paper can fold the rock within itself, so paper, one, paper wins. That means player 1 wins. Okay, now it is between paper for player 1 and it's Caesar for player 2. So since Caesar can cut the paper, so it so it's player 2 who wins. Now let me paste once more there. Now if player 1 says Caesar and player 2 says say rock, then it's between rock and scissor and we know that rock wins in that case because the rock can break the scissor so here player two wins that's the correct result there so the result equals player two wins that's perfect now if player one says scissor we actually need to incorporate all the cases that we can have between player one and player two so if player two says uh, paper so it's between scissor and paper so player one wins that's perfect now for all other cases it's going to be draw because for all other cases player one and player two must have the same values so the result is going to be draw and if you are curious you can see that i have that defined that draw with zero that means it's going to have zero there in result okay let's now return that result to the caller and we are done so we have done writing the function rock paper scissor where we are receiving the values for both the players that means what the player has said and here we are having the comparison between those values and we are actually finding the result who wins and we are returning that to the caller we are going to use this function from the actual game join me in the next tutorial where i'm going to write the actual game there inside of this main method and we're going to use this function thank you for watching